Welcome to the New Testament Bible Study, presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. I'm David Barton. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young man Timothy, encouraged him to rightly divide the word of truth. Paul's encouragement both then and even now is to know and study God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, is profitable for reproof, is profitable for correction, is profitable for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished, equipped for every good work. Our goal for this study is to focus on and better understand the New Testament epistles written by Paul and, and John and Peter and others. Open your Bibles now and let's study together. But first, let's begin let's with the word, word of prayer. prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Our God and our Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to open your word and to study. And we're grateful, Father, that you have preserved in writing those things that you would have us to know. As we read, Father, from the Apostle Paul, over and over he encourages us to be of one mind, to be like-minded. We pray, Father, as we study on this occasion, that we might focus on those things that you would have us to know, and that we would be willing, Father, to take them into our lives and to live them out on a day-to-day -day basis. Bless us to that end. In Jesus' name, and amen. Welcome to the New Testament Bible study. Our lesson today is taken once again from the book of Romans, this time from chapter 15, and a request to be like-minded. Let's read verses 5, 6, and 7 of Romans 15. Paul writes, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another just as, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Paul identifies God five. as the God of patience, the God of comfort, and he makes a plea for all of us to be like-minded that fifth verse reads, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. Paul points his first century audience and us today to God, the God of all patience and all comfort. In 2 Peter chapter 3, at verse 9, Peter writes, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And the word that Peter uses for long-suffering means to be patient. So Paul and Peter both point us to the God as a patient and long-suffering God whose desire is that no one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's desire is reflected in the Scripture, both Old and New Testament, that we might have hope. In Romans chapter 15, at verse 4, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now notice Paul's request in the second part of verse, verse 5, that we might be like-minded toward one another. Notice carefully the qualification of that like-mindedness is according to Christ Jesus. Not according to man's opinion, not according to man's traditions, but according to Christ Jesus, based on and according to His will, His teachings, His directions that we might be one in Him. Notice the oneness that Paul presents in Ephesians chapter 4. I'll begin reading those first six verses of Ephesians 4. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another 
in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. In verse 6 of our lesson text, Paul gives us the reason for our like-mindedness. For our oneness is that we might glorify God. In verse 6 he writes that you may be, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This plea of Paul's to be like-minded, to be of one mind and of one mouth is not... It's not isolated to this single passage. Turn back with me to Romans chapter 12 this time. And let's look at verse 15 and following. Romans 12, beginning at verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. And then Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth in that first, first chapter, verse 10 reads, Now I plead with you, brethren, he's writing to the church, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together, notice, in the same mind and in the same judgment. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 at verse 11, Paul writes, Finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. And then in Philippians chapter 1 at verse 27, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Philippians chapter 2 those first three verses, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. And then in Philippians chapter 3, verse 16, Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Now, this plea to be of one mind is not isolated to the Apostle Paul. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, Peter writes, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love his brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous. And then Jesus in his prayer in John chapter 17 makes a very passionate plea for unity that we as Christians might be one. In verse 22, Jesus prays to the Father that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So Paul says in our lesson text, with one mind and with one mouth and one accord, we're to glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to glorify God, we must be in the Christ. We must be a faithful child of God. Turn over to Galatians chapter 3. And let's read in that third chapter, beginning at verse 24. It's a familiar passage. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, 
that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we're no longer under a tutor. For you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Notice, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 27, Paul writes, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Therefore, Paul concludes in verse 7, Receive one another, treat one another, accept one another as fellow Christians. In Romans 15, verse 7, Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. In first century Rome, the request to receive one another and the words that Paul employs would have been understood to mean to have affectionate, have an, affect, have affection, an affectionate regard to one another and to cordially accept each other, to be of one and the same mind. And then he qualifies our acceptance to one another even further by once again pointing us to Christ. Receive one another just as Christ receives and accepts us. For see, Jesus is our example. So Paul says with one mind, with one mouth, in one accord, we're to glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to glorify God, we must first be in Christ. We must be a faithful child of God. In Galatians chapter 3, again, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Remember Jesus' instructions in Mark chapter 16? And Jesus said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And friend, those instructions have not changed through the years. Remember Hebrews chapter 13? At verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that also applies to His teachings, including the plan of salvation. It has not changed through the years. It too is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. Friend, if you have questions about your salvation, please give us a call and contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We would love to sit down and open the Bible and talk with you. Thank you for studying with us today. May God bless. Thank you for watching the New Testament Bible study. If you have comments or questions about today's study, write to us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ, P.O. Box 361, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, 37738. If you would like a free Bible correspondence course, send an email to Bible study at GatlinburgChurchOfChrist.com. We invite you to join us in person on Sunday morning for our regular Bible study at 9 a.m. and worship at 10 a.m. We meet on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. for evening worship. On Wednesday, we meet at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study. We're located at 414 Trinity Lane near downtown Gatlinburg. For more information about the church, visit our website at www.gatlinburgchurchofchrist.com. Thanks again for joining us today in our study of the New Testament. Give me the Bible.